This tutorial follows on from our previous one on asynchronous Python from the Absolute Foundations. Today we'll be using our newfound skills to scrape episode pages of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, both synchronously and then asynchronously with AsyncIO and AIO HTTP. Then, we'll write the beginnings of an asynchronous web server and client which will allow us to build our own fully-fledged asynchronous blog with great functionality including async database calls, async uploads and much much more. Let's waste no further time and begin. We're in PyCharm and have created a pure Python project. This is simply a shortcut for creating a Python virtual environment in the usual way, so feel free to use any IDE or editor you like. We'll create two Python modules for later, client and server. Make sure you pip install AIO HTTP, AIO SQLite, PyTest AIO HTTP, as we'll be taking a look at testing async frameworks later, and the requests library. The latest stable version of Python is 3.8, but anything 3.7 or higher will do. Async is moving thick and fast and is very exciting, but is liable to great changes between minor version changes of Python. The version info attribute will give you this information as a name tuple, with the major, minor and micro version numbers clearly labelled. We have a file urls.txt that has 38 URLs, one per line, of some recent podcast episodes. Our first program will download these to our local drive synchronously, i.e. a request will be sent for the first page, the contents downloaded, saved to its own file locally, then once that's done, the next request for the next page is sent. We'll take the time just before we send our first request and take the time again after we finish downloading and saving the 38th URL. Therefore, we can work out the time elapsed and print this to the terminal. Our first function, download file, takes a URL as its only argument. We then call the get function of the requests library, assign the result of this to response, then return its content attribute. The next function we define is to save the content to disk. So we take two arguments, n will be what we add to the base string in order to make a unique file name. Content is the content returned by our previous function. We use a context manager to create and open a file in write binary mode, then write the contents to the file. By using a context manager, we ensure that the file is then closed after this block is done running. Lastly, we have if name equals main, so that the subsequent code runs when we open this module and doesn't run if we import it. We're timing things with perf counter of the time built-in module, which is really interesting in its own right and preferable to using time.time, .time, in my opinion. On any given platform, Perf Counter uses the clock with the highest available resolution for measuring a short duration. It includes time elapsed during sleep, and it has an undefined reference point, so only the difference between results of consecutive calls is valid, which happens to be exactly what we're doing here. If you open up the REPL and enter time.perfcounter, you'll see that you don't get seconds past the Unix epoch at all. Lines 19 to 21. We're getting our URLs by opening urls.txt, then calling read lines, which will return a list with the contents of each line as a separate string in the list. We need some unique file names for saving to disk though, so one way of doing this is to use enumerate, which will give us a two item tuple with naught at index naught and the first URL at index one. The next tuple with the second run through the for loop will give us one at index naught and the second URL at index one and so on and so on. We call our download file function first, then we call our write file function. Let's give this a go. It works, and as you can see, it's going through the URLs list one at a time. 
The whole thing has taken just over 20 seconds, and our folder has now filled up with 38 separate HTML files. Now let's write the equivalent asynchronous scraper. Requests itself isn't an async library, so that's where AIO HTTP comes in. We'll start off like we did before, defining our download file function. The most obvious change to make is to change things from def to async def, as it's an asynchronous function. Recall that with the synchronous version, we called requests.get, passing in the URL. The preferred interface for making HTTP requests in AIO HTTP is client session. As you can see from the documentation, there are many potential arguments that you can alter, but the defaults are all sensible, and in this case, we have no need to change any of them. The fundamentals that you ought to be aware of is that session encapsulates connector instances in a connection pool. It supports async context managers, and will make use of this by writing an async with statement. This is good practice to ensure that it closes itself after the body has finished executing. Context managers can be arbitrarily nested, and within this first with statement, we have a second async with, which is directing the session we just instantiated to get URL, and this is available in the body of the context manager as resp, short for response. We can call the read method of response to get the content we're after, but we need to make sure not to forget to include await, as it's an async method we're calling. Finally, we return the content. Secondly, for the write file function, we'll change it from def to async def again, but apart from that, there's nothing in the body of the function that needs changing. You'll recall from the first tutorial in this series that async functions need to be driven by something else. We don't get our desired outcome just by calling them alone. As part of this, we'll define an additional async function, scrape task that takes in a number for the file name and a URL to download. Here we await downloading the URL, assigning it to content, then awaiting writing to disk. Lastly, we have a main async function. In our sync version, we had a for loop that made a list containing all of the URLs of interest then one by one went through each URL, downloaded it, then wrote it to disk, not entirely dissimilar to our async scrape task function. Now clearly, that for loop is going through each URL one by one, so if that was our strategy in our async version, then it would defeat the purpose of making everything else async. It wouldn't run any faster, as we'll still be going through each URL one by one. So what we need to do in this async version in the main function is to make an empty list, tasks, then we can run our for loop going through each URL one by one, but appending the task, scrape task URL to this list. After we've populated our list with the 38 tasks we want to be run, we can then await asyncio.wait, which is similar to asyncio.gather, if you've come across that before. They do have their differences, but we'll cover that another time. All that leaves is to asyncio.run, our main function, making sure to take the time before and after. As you can see, this async version only took just over 2 seconds, as opposed to the 20 seconds it took the synchronous version. That's a 10x improvement. In the next instalment of this async series, we'll build our own asynchronous server, blog page with full command of async database entries, async uploading of files, and much, much more.